everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm excited to welcome my colleague Landis Fryer, who's a former admissions officer at both Dartmouth and Northwestern, to the show today to talk to us about two plus three plus two, not two plus three, three plus <laughs> two engineering programs. Hi, Landis. Hey, Beth. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And thanks for joining us today. Good. I really appreciate Glad to it. Be here. Mm -hmm. So you recently wrote an amazing blog post for us on three plus two engineering programs. So why don't we start with the basics? And that is, what is a three plus two engineering program? Oh, and by the way, you actually worked at a university where they had this three plus two engineering program. That's correct. correct. That's correct. Right. So at Dartmouth, uh, it's one of the institutions that offers the three plus two engineering program. Okay. Uh, well, this kind of program is a special educational track that students can embark upon that actually combines two different educational experiences. So they can have three years at an undergraduate liberal arts institution, typically a smaller college, and they can kind of focus in on whatever major they want. And then they will enroll in a engineering school. Mm -hmm. Typically, this will be an engineering school that offers them more kind of focused educational experiences within engineering. The thing that happened is that these schools uh, kind of joined forces, mm -hmm. essentially. And what they said is they're like, okay, we don't offer an engineering program, but we want to give students a foundation in their education to kind of segue naturally into an engineering program. So these are five-year programs. That's the three plus the two. Right. So you do three years in a liberal arts education, and then you do two years at the engineering school. The great thing is that you'll graduate with two degrees. Yeah. So you'll get a bachelor's from your liberal arts education and then a second degree in engineering from that engineering school. Right. Which is pretty good. And then, you know, I think families hear, oh, five years. Right. But what is a typical engineering student doing in right? So the undergrad? typical engineering student is actually probably graduating in five years anyway. Yeah. Right. right. So they typically will have extra educational opportunities that kind of extend their degree for their undergraduate education into five years anyway. Right. The benefit here is that they get two degrees. Okay? Yeah. Whereas doing a typical undergraduate engineering program, which may be five years anyway, they'll only graduate with that one degree. And so right. that's kind of the difference between these two offerings. Right. And, and what's also kind of exciting is that a lot of the engineering programs are at some, you know, the liberal arts programs are really wonderful. And then the engineering programs are at really wonderful schools. So also right. great. So right. how does it work? Does a student apply to both programs when they're applying to be admitted or walk us through that process? Sure. It actually is, act, is actually a little bit different than that. So mm -hmm. typically the student applies to their undergraduate liberal arts institution. And again, there are countless institutions out there. I do actually recommend that that if you're interested in something like this, that you go to um, the websites uh, of these institutions. Typically, well, actually, there are three programs that are fairly popular. Mm -hmm. uh, one is at Dartmouth, which is where I worked yeah. at the engineering school there. And then there's also Columbia and Washington University in St. Louis. They mm -hmm. have very extensive connections with liberal arts institutions across the country. So you can start there or start with the admission side of a liberal arts college that you're typically interested in. And you can see what the steps may be to go into a three, two, three plus two program. Right. Now, generally the student applies to their undergraduate admiss uh, admissions process separately than the actual process to get into the three, two program. Generally, they'll apply for three plus two somewhere in their sophomore year. Okay? okay. So then if you're able to like meet the GPA criteria, you're able to satisfy some kind of prerequisites during your undergraduate liberal arts experience, then that'll again get you that access to one of the engineering schools. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I think I saw there's, is there a list where, where students can find many of the programs that are currently available right now? There was like a wiki list maybe? There is a wiki. So the thing is that like the wiki is a complicated uh, <laughs> URL <laughs> that I have not memorized. So I do advise just do like a quick web search. Got just it. do like a three plus two wiki. If okay. you look that up online, it'll be able to take you to the Wikipedia that offers a list of those liberal arts colleges that have those connections with those engineering schools. Mm -hmm. Right. Again, and I like, think URL is pretty complicated. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, and like, it's fine. It, right? And we're not going to read it out loud because people will be like listening in their car. Uh, I'll Google that later. <laughs> right. So that's exactly. probably the key. I do think that one of the important caveats we would 
throw out there, right, is it's Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which means it's updated by people and, Correct. you know, not necessarily the colleges. So it's not going to be the definitive list, but it, right. it'll it point you in the right direction, which I think exactly. is Exactly. And again, like that's a great place to kind of just start to give right. you a kind of jump start into the search. Again, like it's not definitive, but again, you'll be able to see a list generally of those schools. Again, I always recommend to follow up with the actual school itself. Yep. So if you see a liberal arts college on that list, go to their admissions website, see what it is that they say about their three, two, three plus two process. And then that'll give you the most up-to-date information. So those colleges' websites are actually probably the best way to go. But again, that wiki will give you some foundational information to kind of springboard you right. into the search process. Exactly. Uh, and any anything that you would want students to keep top of mind, so I'm entering a liberal arts program, mm -hmm. they have three plus two, I have my sights set on the two years in engineering, what should I be thinking of from day one or thinking that, oh, I need to make sure I do this? Right, right. So the great thing that you can do is that if you know that you want to go into a three plus two program, just start the process early as soon as you get admitted to the institution that um, is going to give you that liberal arts education. Mm -hmm. Just start early. Look for any advisor or mentor at that institution that's your, that your alma mater really yeah. and then see whether or not they again will have that information typically they do have someone at the institution that kind of helps guide yeah. students through the three plus two process so find that person you know connect yep. with them um and then you can then see okay what are those prerequisites what can i major in what are the steps that i need to do in order to complete the process into this type of program and right. so get that started like as soon as you hit the ground at your liberal arts institution and then you'll be able to again kind of incorporate that kind of track into your overall educational program Right. Because I think for something like this, one of the challenges is that you can't really float along. You have only three years to satisfy the graduation requirements for your right, your undergraduate work. And then you also simultaneously need to be making sure you're taking the courses that are going to be required for the two year engineering program. Mm -hmm. And it's not the kind of thing that you're just going to kind of like, oh, I'm going to choose whatever right. I choose. And then boom, <laughs> you're, not you're fall into it. Right? Exactly. That's exactly right. This is not going to be spoon fed to you and you're not going to right. fall into it. You are going to need to take an active role in right. your education. Correct. So the idea is to then, again, know what you want to do. So again, this will take a little bit more work mm -hmm. on your part as an yeah. undergraduate to kind of see, A, again, who's out there that's mm -hmm. going to help me understand this process. And then finding that research to see how then you'll be able to complete your undergraduate experience at your liberal arts school and then transition into the engineering school. So you have to do a lot more work. It's not just like something you can fall into, right? right. It's right. something that requires you to be a lot more proactive yeah. so that you have to search out, again, folks that can help you with this. And then you have to kind of see, okay, what are those opportunities for those engineering schools that are out there as well? Right. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the things I have read some about um, people mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, is just these three plus two programs seem really great, right? And Dartmouth mm -hmm. and Columbia in particular, and probably Wash U and St. Louis partner yep. with a lot of liberal arts institutions. Yep. So, I don't believe they are welcoming a flood of students to their right. campuses every year. So I personally, if this was something, for example, that my son was interested in, I would probably be having asking him to have those conversations with the person who's going to guide you at that institution before you actually pin all your hopes on that. Because, oh. you know, I just I don't know what the statistics are, but I because you can't just fall into it. I my guess is that many students are in the liberal arts program. They maybe get right. focused on other things. They thought, oh, I'm good at math and science. I'm going to go into mm -hmm. engineering and they lose interest. Or they just decide not to. Um, I would be interested in and I don't think anybody keeps stats on that because you're not applying to the program when right. you apply. Right? right. How many students start with the intention of doing that and how many actually do the program? So those mm -hmm. if you're really dead set on it, mm -hmm. um, I do think those are some questions I would ask before you enroll. Um, I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree because these schools don't produce these statistics. So you don't know like, right. oh, are there 150 students that do the three plus two? Are there 75? They, right. like, you don't know. Again, this requires you as an undergraduate to do a little more work. The benefit again, however, is that you will then experience something that is a little less typical 
mm-hmm. but also that gives you two distinct educational experiences, right? So you do that little legwork ahead of time mm-hmm. to get those outcomes that are going to be very beneficial for you. The interesting thing is that a lot of traditional engineering programs are getting very competitive nowadays, yep. right? right? So uh, the, the STEM uh, areas just in general are fairly popular now, but particularly engineering, Mm -hmm. uh, computer engineering, electrical engineering, uh, civil engineering, all of these are very, very popular nowadays. They become very competitive on the uh, uh, admissions front if you just typically want to go directly into those schools. A lot of these engineering programs are at some of the awesome flagship state institutions, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, And again, they're very competitive. If you are a student who's like, okay, I want to do engineering, but maybe I have an interest in history as well, or I'm thinking about something in the sciences, but maybe I don't know. And, or if you're questioning yourself, like, I'm not fully committed to an engineering program right, right now, what else is out there? A three, two, a three plus two program can be an excellent opportunity for you. Right. That way you can have that liberal arts education, and then you can segue into the engineering program. The great thing about that is that in your liberal arts education, you're going to get those critical thinking skills. You're going to get those analytical skills. You're going to get uh, skills that are going to help build your educational experience at the engineering school. I would recommend if students are kind of thinking about engineering school, again, this is kind of a great way to go, especially because they're very competitive nowadays. Right. So something to think about. Again, like, I don't know what the statistics are. The schools don't produce them. I don't know how competitive these programs are, but as you said, Beth, just like reach out to the person that's the coordinator or the one that is kind of uh, leading students along this kind of path at those institutions, get that information from them, connect with them, find out what those steps are going to be, find out what those prerequisites are. And then once you get that, then you'll be able to kind of figure out like, okay, this might be a good thing for me. Right. Right. And I think, too, in reaching out, um, it may become clear that it's really supported at one school and not at another. Or, you know, they kind of just like, oh, yeah, we have that at one school. And the other school is like, yes, we have that. Here is the person who will guide you. Why don't you talk to them? And seeing, you know, a lot of times you visit colleges, they all, I mean, they're all great, right? Like I do all these tours on my own. And now with my son, I'm like, oh, this would be such a great school. I mean, he would be so happy here. I would love to go here. But it's it's not until you drill down into the things that really impact what your goals are that you may sometimes start to see differences that will be really impactful and that you often kind of gloss over. Mm-hmm. Um, in the in the interest of well, but their football team is so good, right. or <laughs> the dorms were amazing, or whatever right. it is, right? right? So this is a That's good right. place to dig in a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And again, looking at these programs, again, they are out there, and this yes. is the great thing is that like, and they're not so popular, yes. which means that again, if you want to go the engineering route, take a look, look up those three plus two programs that are out there. You're going to have a wonderful, supportive educational experience. And then on top of that, in your, in your liberal arts education, on top of that, you'll then go to engineering school and get that degree as well, right? right? And so those kind of experiences are rare. Again, it's very untraditional and not as popular. So if you're a student that's interested in engineering, you think that this is something that you want to do. Again, if your end goal is to enter that field, which is very large, by the way. Right, exactly. If that's your end goal, then consider a three plus two program. See what's out there. See what these schools are offering, what their connectivity is. And as you said, Beth, see which ones are offering that depth of support yeah, versus yeah. ones that are like the three plus two. Yeah, you got to do that on your own. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, figure oh, yeah. it out. <laughs> I think we have that. I'm not sure what that's right. all about. I heard about that before, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that could be something that's going to be beneficial for you as well, for the student as well, to kind of look a little bit deeper into that. Again, that kind of research, understanding that program, understanding that process prior to even applying to schools is going to be something beneficial for you as well. So yeah. you can kind of uh, incorporate that into your research process as you're looking at schools. Yep. And then that can then naturally lead you toward those um, toward those awesome educational experiences yep. that are the three plus two. Right, those best fits. Yeah. Landis, yep. thank you so much for being here today. Yes. I really appreciate it. No, oh, you're welcome, Beth. It's always good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. And how nice to see you, have it recorded and we've shared yep. out with everybody. Awesome. Um, We're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about supplemental essays because it is that time of year. So don't go away.